Good afternoon, everybody. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend this morning, so sorry for that. Um, I was asked actually to um, make a, a short input about uh, 15 minutes, so I won't, you know, overflow you with 20 slides. It will be only four slides, all in all. And uh, my perspective is to, you know, explain a little bit uh, what somehow is also the reaction of the Swiss Development Corporation on the debt crisis in Mozambique. And uh, I try to put that a little bit in a broader Swiss government perspective also. So uh, that's my starting point. And uh, just to give you this first slide. So priority setting, the Swiss priority setting in Mozambique is influenced somehow by many factors. There might be some persons thinking that, you know, Swiss Development Corporation is setting its priorities, implementing its program. This is clearly not the case. But, I mean, the, the priorities somehow are, um, a, you know, a result of plenty of factors which influence somehow this priority setting. So, I'm just going through some some of them. Huh? So, first of all, I mean, Swiss Development Corporation has a mandate, you know, linked to the development law. And this mandate has very much to do with the human development indicators. So, it's about poverty, it's about access to water, to access services, etc., etc., etc. So, that's where we, as an organization, are coming from. And it's very clear that these priorities actually influence then what at the end of the day is done in, in Mozambique. But, you know, we have on the other side, we have the demand side from the Mozambique government, from the civil society, etc. So, I mean, this ha is another kind of stream of influence on setting our uh, priorities. Then, we are acting in Mozambique in a kind of a donor's landscape, meaning that it would not make a lot of sense if everybody is doing the same, but you know, we have to reflect where actually can we make the difference looking at the involvements of other donors. Then, and I don't have, I, I can't hide you that, the influence of the Swiss domestic policies, I mean, has increased in the last uh, 10 years. I've been now for 30 years in this uh, business. And uh, my assessment is that in the last 10 years, I mean, there's a lot more of involvement on priority setting of the Swiss dom domestic po uh, politics, looking a little bit how the consolation in the parliament is, if it's a more right-wing parliament or left-wing parliament, etc. This influences very much, you know, what is being done in a, in some in some uh, in some uh, contexts? <coughs> there is a little bit of a difference, you know. When we talk about the occupied Palestinian territories, I mean the the, the, the involvement of, of the Swiss politics is much higher than maybe in Mozambique. There are some countries with less attention and some countries with more attention. Clearly, North Africa, related to the migration issues, etc., is a very high attention, whereas Mozambique, Tanzania, may be a little bit less. Then we have the Swiss foreign poli uh, politics, and uh, you know that uh, the uh, State Secretary of Economic Affairs, which was re is responsible for the general budget support issues. I mean, uh, and you know, uh, these priorities come from there. Generally speaking, with the SECO, we have, we have quite a smooth collaboration in the Mozambican context in the last years. So, there were not a lot of tensions somehow between what is coming from their side and what is coming from our side, but you know, uh, what is done by uh, the, this branch of the SECO, uh, I mean, it's, it's going beyond, you know, there is a Swiss economic poli uh, politic interest. Then, uh, influencing naturally is also developments in the context, you know, in the context in Mozambique, and that's what we are relating to this afternoon, you know, the corruption context, the development context, etc., etc. And then we have this, you know, we have our planning instruments which highly uh, influence the priorities, 
And not to forget, we have a cast. You have been reading in the flyer that Switzerland has been involved in Mozambique since 79. We have been heavily involved in the peace process in the 90s. We are, you know, a kind of a long-term, I would say, reliable partner to Mozambique since many, many years to the government, but also to the, to the civil society. So, just to mention a few, to, to, to give you the picture and to say, I mean, it would be naive to, to, to argue and to say, the Swiss Open Corporation could just do this or this or this or this. No. More and more, this uh, is a kind of, a, you know, there are some tensions between the different mandates of the different actors which are influencing the priority setting and the mandates of the different actors are not uh, similar, you know. And uh, what has been a kind of a priority of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the last year in the last years was to improve what we call the the policy coherence, the external policy coherence, and this improvement of the uh, external poli policy uh, 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 coherence somehow, as we've been mentioning here, has a price in inverted commas, and the price we have to pay is also that we, from the Swiss Development Corporation side, I mean, we, um, you know, we are more and more and more. Um, losing some, I would say, autonomy or independence in the priority setting. So, this, this is just, I mean, to set a little bit the stage. Now, if we look, and I won't go in sectors and projects of what we are doing, I thought this is not of major interest here, but I mean, just a little bit the trends, you know, to show you. So, what you see here is, you have, you know, our involvement in education, in green, then in economics, then you have the general budget support, then you have, you know, the social, social domains like water and health, and you have this administration and humanitarian aid issue. So, if you look a little bit, I think it's interesting, you know, if you look from 99 to 2016, what is very clear is, in terms of general budget support, you know, you see this line here and going down again. Huh? So uh, you see on the other side in blue what we're doing in social sectors, you know. Huh? And uh, in 2000, in Mozambique, you have the flood crisis, you know. And the flood crisis, naturally, the humanitarian aid was jumping up, you know. And, uh, and was decreasing later on again. So this, you know, changes here uh, somehow is linked to the flood crisis. Then the second thing, and this is interesting in terms of general budget support, is you might know that in 2004, five, I mean, we had this international commitment, what we called the Paris Declaration, and the Paris Declaration was a kind of, a, you know, ID. I think reasonable idea, saying that it doesn't make sense that the, all of us bilateral donors are just doing the own business with the governments, but we should somehow coordinate, better coordinate and align to the priorities of the partner countries. And I mean, with this Paris Declaration somehow then the jump up of, you know, this was translated within Switzerland uh, in the jump up of the general budget support issues. And it's somehow, you know, also a little bit decreasing the social sector involvement because we thought if we are going to finance the government and the policies, the, the, the policies of the Mozambican government, then it's... <coughs> their responsibility to cater for social services, we are actually putting money into the budget, in the general budget, but also in the sectorial budget. And then, I mean, what is obvious here is we have then the debt crisis, that's the issue of today, and, and the debt crisis, you see, there's a kind of, you know, there's a kind of a dramatic drop somehow of our involvement and, and um, a kind of, you know, and this is interesting, a kind of response 
of the Swiss government in terms of increasing significantly our uh, involvement in governance programs. So this is a little bit the development. These are the developments of the last of the last years, and I think uh, what can be seen here is, you know, there are sometimes some critics saying that, that there is no reaction, you know, that, that, that you know that the Swiss Development Corporation somehow, uh, you know, uh, uh, a big container boat, you know and just doing its thing. No, there are some reactions in terms of programming, in terms of priority settings. <coughs> and if we look, go a little bit further and look, you know, this is the overall budget uh, of our involvement in Mozambique over the years, to, 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 to the next year. And uh, we have then, you know, these uh, internal costs, we have the contributions to the NGOs, be it uh, international or local NGOs. We have the private sector development in um, this color here. We have the direct project with the government. We have the common funds and we have the general budget support. So, I mean, interesting is First of all, the development here, you know, the overall decrease somehow in 2016. That's confirming what I've been saying before. So we decreased significantly somehow with the debt crisis also our involvement. And there is a shift, you know. And the shift here is, you know, if you look at 2016, is that a significant decrease naturally in uh, common funds. So. Common funds are funds of different bilateral donors given to the government in specific sectors, for instance, health and water. Yeah. So a significant decrease in our involvement in, in, in common funds and naturally a kind of a phasing out of the general budget support doesn't exist anymore. This was a long negotiation with the State Secretary of uh, Foreign, uh, of foreign um, Economic Affairs. And uh, what you see is that uh, we have been um, this, instead, we, we didn't drop somehow the government, huh? but what we did is we shifted this fund contributions, general budget support and sectorial budget support, more to some bilateral projects with the government, you know. And the idea behind this was that somehow we can better also control what is happening. Huh? So this is one, one uh, I think, the issue I want to highlight. And the, the second issue is if you compare then our contributions to the government 2012 and 2018, I mean, you know, you see the proportion. I mean, we have been more or less, you know, halving our contributions, direct contributions to the government. We have been increasing our contributions to the private sector and to the civil society. Civil society mainly in terms of uh, governance, uh, civil society organizations, looking anti-corruption, looking human rights, etc. At my last slide would then be that. So the situation today is that if you look at the percentages, somehow aid to the government of Mozambique uh, is 40%, non-government uh, aid is 60%, and then you have this uh, more programmatic uh, uh, aid, this is a little bit the transversal aid, which is the 17%. This is the, this is the situation today. So, our high priority today is supporting the um, Mozambican peace process, so it's a, it's an active role in this peace process. And uh, my question mark here is, you know, is this uh, dynamics which we have today in the peace process somehow, you know, uh, putting a little bit on the side the whole discussion about the debt crisis. I mean, no bilateral donor at this very moment has an interest somehow to, you know, to put in danger 
the dynamics which are at this very moment going on. So my question mark would be, can we sustain somehow the pressure on the Mozambican government in this political situation, which is quite uh, a new and which is quite, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of hope. I was uh, three weeks ago in Mozambique, and a lot of hope linked from the population to this peace process. So, I mean, the whole question about, you know, where are the international, where is the international community now focusing in its priorities versus, you know, how are we more supportive, not to put in danger somehow what is, uh, what is being done in the peace process. Then, uh, the second point here, I mean, you know, we have been enhancing or we are still enhancing our programs on governance, anti-corruption, land rights, civil society uh, support, and I mean the tax regime. And if somebody is asking me what is the most convincing result of Mozambique in the last uh, 20 years, uh, I would immediately say that. I mean, compared to other African countries, that you know, the income in terms of the taxes, I mean, are significantly higher in Mozambique than in neighboring countries. So there has been a high somehow, you know, a lot of efforts put in that, and I think the Mozambique, uh, Mozambican government somehow was very much succeeding, specifically in that, not very much in the other human development indexes like poverty reduction, access to good, access to social services, etc. But this somehow is a kind of a positive point which is highlighted in many cases. Then uh, parallel to that, we try somehow with our involvement to sustain the social services uh, provision, you know, and the new priority or a priority which is coming up somehow is a, a lot of you know energy and 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 uh, you know also thinking is going into this uh, question of um, where are the jobs for the young people in Mozambique, also in the neighboring countries. So the whole question about job creation, I think, is is is, is gaining importance in the overall uh, in the overall portfolio. And this is kind of, uh, you know, a standby issue. The humanitarian aid would be ready actually to contribute if uh, uh, additional or new crisis would occur. And then maybe, you know, the question of where are we going? I don't think that we are coming back to a kind of issue of general budget support. I think somehow this is over. Yes, and I don't, I could hardly imagine after all the discussions we had in the last the two years that any voice would gain, you know, importance in terms of, uh, you know, getting back to this uh, aid modality. So I have the feeling that this is, this is over. What we are going to do is, on one side, you know, and this is very much linked to the, you know, to the situation of the, of the, of the people, then whereas we can sustain somehow this uh, in selecting, you know, uh, domains, uh, the, the service provision, basic services. But then I would say there is quite a substantial discussion going on at the moment on asking ourselves if we should slowly, slowly phase out traditional, you know, development cooperation instruments because, I mean, the economic uh, perspectives of Mozambique are in the long run, in the medium, not in the short run, but in the long run, I mean, they are uh, quite interesting, so the question is, that the more somehow, you know, Mozambique would be able to finance, you know, its priorities itself, the less would be uh, needed also that we are somehow, you know, uh, coming with our traditional development uh, cooperation instruments. So it might be somehow a trend in the future that we are phasing out more and more these uh, development instruments. This does not mean that uh, we would not respond to specific demands in specific domains and I would very much relate that to the domains where Switzerland somehow has a profile, you know, where, 
you know, partner countries saying Switzerland is strong in this and is strong in that. So, I mean, I foresee somehow that uh, these uh, dimensions will more, you know, gain of weight um, and that maybe the demands also in Mozambique inside become more specific. And the last thing, and I would end with that, is that the, you know, the standby humanitarian aid dimension will remain. So, this was a kind of, a, you know, just a, a small input to give you a little bit of a picture <coughs> of what the development is, what is the situation today, and what somehow is the content of the discussions of the future bilateral relations between Switzerland and Mozambique. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, I think um, the discussion is just, just open for comments and questions. I think we yeah, can do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I think we just collect all the comments or do you want to take the questions and comments one by one or That's collect a few? That's all right, so maybe we collect a few and then we'll maybe we'll combine them when you are. Yeah, please, over there. Yes, thank you very much. I was surprised by an absence in your presentation, which is the absence of the Swiss private sector. At two points. The first point was agenda setting. So you had all these arrows leading to the policies in place towards Mozambique. But there didn't seem to be any Swiss actor who mattered outside of government. Um, I'm not sure that actually how it is playing out on it. And the second point was the debt crisis, which seemed to be produced by this, the Mozambican government. So once the debt crisis is in place, you could no longer support the government directly. You had to change your policies. But somehow Credit Suisse doesn't play into it. It's a Mozambican matter, which has to be addressed by the way you deal with this Mozambican government. And I just would like to comment on this, whether it was a deliberate choice to present in this way, and how you feel your work is actually affected by Swiss private actors, I believe. Yeah, perhaps my question go to uh, a similar uh, situation, but uh, perhaps more specific. Uh, I'm especially concerned. I was collaborator of uh, the STC in Mozambique. I know that there was a lot of investment, not only in money, but also in, in human uh, quality into Mozambique from STC. It's a long-term program since 30 years. It is. Uh, 30 millions, we have seen these figures. And then we have this situation of this debt crisis in this case of uh, Credit Suisse. So for me is the question, what is there about, you have also taken this, this uh, keyword, policy coherence. Policy coherence in the sense that it's evident that you have a big backslash in your work with the collaboration in cooperation with Mozambique and on the other side we have an involvement of Credit Suisse and in this sense also I think should be involvement of FEMA and how this, did it work this question about policy coherence inside the government structures of course a big part is outside, is the policy, civil society, but one response should also exist at this level of the Swiss administration. Hey, I would like to know a bit more about tax regimes. What do you mean exactly? Because if it's not fiscal regimes, so including besides the revenue side, also the expenditure side, it doesn't say much. You, you can have more revenue, better tax collection mechanism without having public investments, etc. So you cannot have a redistribution of income, basically. So to increase inequality and uh, decrease inequality. <laughs> I 
And Switzerland is a little bit unusual in this situation in that the debt crisis was entirely facilitated by a Swiss bank. And the corruption would not have taken place without the Swiss bank. And <laughs> therefore, it does seem to me that SDC must have a special role here because the Mozambican elite was effectively corrupted by the Swiss. <laughs> it, does this get taken into account and what can be the SDC response at home about that? Yeah, I thought that I can escape all these questions. Anyway, I'll try to, to, to uh, uh, respond in, in a serious way. Um, <laughs> you know, first of all, private sector, yes, the private sector involvement, or, or the involvement of the Swiss private sector, and I'll come back to the current Swiss issue, but the involvement of on the private sector in, in Mozambique, I mean, Mozambique is not a kind of a priority country for the Swiss private sector. There are some companies uh, trying to make business in Mozambique, you know, uh, Switzerland is involved in all this uh, commodity trade, but this is not specific to Mozambique, but also to Tanzania, etc. But I mean, you know, there, Nestle was there, was jumping out again. So, I mean, Mozambique is not the environment where we have, you know, all the big important companies, uh, Swiss companies in, in the country. <coughs> so, uh, uh, these, these, the private sector is not playing somehow at this very moment, it might be in the future more, but at this very moment is not playing, you know, a very important role in the agenda setting. Now coming to Credit Suisse, you know, it is very clear that the Credit Suisse issue is, um, is basically a development issue. And it's basically a development issue because if you look at the level of debt of uh, Mozambique and uh, you know, uh, the funds available to serve the uh, national priorities, I mean, it's very clear that the, you know, the, 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 the influence of this debt crisis on development, uh, not also only on politics, but basically on development, the price is very high. You know. So, uh, I mean, we, agree, we would agree all on that. Now, when it comes then to the whole question of, yes, at domestic <coughs> policy level, what have you been doing as Swiss Development Corporation? What about the Swiss uh, policy coherence? I mean, I refer to my first slide. It is clearly not the case that we just have, you know, a kind of little bit shifting our, our programs, etc. Et <laughs> but we had within the government quite uh, hard discussions on, on, on that. We met Swiss Development Corporation, the Credit Suisse, in that issue and uh, tried to, to ask or yeah, to, to get some explanations and uh, specifically also to. to tell them that, uh, you know, it's a development issue, you know, their, their, their business behavior. And, 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 I mean, you know, these discussions happen. I know that um, the FINMA has been uh, uh, also involved in the whole thing. Unfortunately, as a development organization, uh, we do not have any, you know, information about what the process is and what the outcomes of this process is, is the process has been stopped, etc., etc. So I can't say you anything about that, but I know that FINMA somehow is involved, might be somebody in, in, in the public here or uh, who knows more about it. We tried actually to get the information, but uh, we didn't get any of them. So, I mean, uh, it's clear, the, the, the argument of the Credit Suisse, when we were discussing this then, 
Um, <coughs> that they told us, yes, we are aware that we have a due diligence problem. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and that was a little bit the whole story about it. So, uh, yes, we, we agreed that they had a, a due diligence problem, but, uh, you know, uh, that's more or less it. So, um, there were naturally some discussions within also the ministry on if we should go further than uh, just contacting the Credit Suisse. But referring to my first slide, the outcome of all these discussions were where that, uh, you know, that we, it was decided, not we decided, but it was decided that, you know, uh, the Swiss government is not going further than this discussion we had. So um, that's a little bit the situation uh, that uh, we, we have. Now, um, maybe just adding to your question about the tax and the, the tax revenue uh, issue. I mean, 100% correct. I mean, tax revenue doesn't mean that the growth and the distribution of tax and within the, within the, is going to be in an equal way. I was only talking about the revenue. Mozambique still has a, 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 a very big problem of um, equal growth in them. So inequalities grow, and you have the main centers, or the, the main center, Maputo, and if you go out in the rural, uh, in the rural you know, landscape, then the situation is much different. So uh, I 100% agree. I was only uh, talking about the revenue side, and the revenue side, and this compared to other countries, there is significant progress there. Huh? how actually this money is used later on, this is another story. Mm -hmm. But this is the same with Greece, eh? just to be, to be fair. They increase, they have surplus in the budget, they increase tax collection, it's a better uh, tax system now, but uh, nothing is spent on social services, so Greek citizens do not care a lot about these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have another set of questions. It became known some some days ago that the American Department of Justice and um, the FBI are investigating against Credit Suisse for incitement to corruption. I don't know whether you knew about this before because it had been going on for a long time. Uh, how does the Swiss government react to that and what, what could be done to to reverse that decision, not to go any further. Is it useful if, if civil society puts up some pressure? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you, you may not be the person to answer it. <laughs> Can I just respond to that? I mean, my understanding of the role of the civil society is exactly that. You know? And it's what we are preaching in our partner countries where we are trying to reinforce the civil society to, you know, look for more accountability, etc., 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 should also happen at home. Uh, this is my personal conviction. This is maybe not, you know, what the, the, um, our new Minister of Foreign Affairs would say. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea about that. Uh, I've never met him since, so uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, yes, for sure. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's put it like that. From the only from a development perspective, you know, it is very clear that we should go further in our you know, uh, dealing with the issue. You know, this is 100% clear because, as I said, this is a development issue. But I mean, uh, on the other side, on the other side. Uh, uh, you know, it's a kind of a result of a whole bunch of negotiations and then uh, somehow uh, decisions are taken. Nevertheless, you know, uh, I think we have a domestic issue here. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you know, in Mozambique, my impression is that this uh, new government, which of you inverted from this, that the actual government in Mozambique is very much aware 
of the of the overall situation and tries somehow to solve the matters in a prudent way. We'll see what will be the result. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, my impression is that somehow also uh, in the country, I mean, uh, you know, the government is not inactive. They have a lot of difficulties to go around with the crow report and, 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 and. But I mean, there is somehow also a will to solve that problem. So, uh, I mean, we have the Swiss side and we have the Mozambique side. I do not know if on the Swiss side really there is a political will to go much further than where we are. Can I come back? Very quickly, yeah. Very quickly. <laughs> of Swiss Bank encourages the Mozambicans to steal a large amount of money. They accept the offer, so you punish the Mozambicans. Isn't that unbalanced? <laughs> <laughs> it depends a little bit from which side you argue. I think you, you have an argument, yes, but you are aware, as, as me, that you also can argue in a different way. So, uh, I mean, yes. Uh, there is a Swiss bank who offers a credit, somebody has to accept the credit. So, you know, it's a difficult, it's, it's a difficult discussion. But definitely, I would say that, uh, and that's the reason why we have been discussing with Credit Suisse, I mean, definitely there is responsibility within this institute. I mean, it's, it's basically the same question, but from a different perspective. You see, in the long and hard years of struggle against apartheid, whenever people talked about san sanctions, the argument that was made by those who were against sanctions was that it would hurt the poor. Now, here's a situation uh, where you're taking a decision to hurt the poor, uh, and there seems to be no problem uh, uh, with that. I don't understand it, but uh, uh, more generally, I was hoping that you would take this opportunity to question the whole idea of development uh, aid and development policy. I mean, and to really share with us your thoughts about what is wrong or what is good about development policy. What kinds of lessons uh, uh, you have learned from this case here and how to do it better. Uh, but instead of that, um, you seem to be drawing the lesson that there was a failure of control, uh, that you were not able to uh, follow these things easily to prevent uh, uh, certain things from happening. If you had done that, probably everything would have been uh, uh, fine. And I'm not sure about that. And finally, I I'm really, you see, I'm from Mozambique, uh, and I, I wish you were, you were right about your hope concerning the peace process. Uh, but the way you frame it is precisely part of the problem. But you see, uh, there is no idea about how to end that conflict. Um, uh, and, and for me, uh, the lack of this idea has to do with the fact that uh, the thinking is about finding some kind of accommodation between those two uh, uh, groups, between the government and between uh, Renan. There is a staunch resistance uh, from both of them to open the dialogue to everyone in the country uh, so that one takes this opportunity uh, actually uh, to mend uh, as far as possible uh, the political system. So if donors go there, uh, and, and really convey this idea uh, that there's someone working on peace in Mozambique uh, by encouraging two people to talk over the phone and not saying to, uh, to the Mozambican public what they are actually discussing and, and refusing uh, to have any other person in Mozambique taking part in that discussion. Uh, really, I, I think your understanding of what is at issue in Mozambique 
uh, is highly problematic. Not to speak about uh, the fact that uh, part of this conflict is also the result of the lack of coherence uh, from international observers uh, who uh, approved, uh, passed a, a seal of approval uh, to the elections, but when one actor jumped, they were not energetic enough in telling them, look, you should abide by the rules. So may I respond to that? Please. So, first of all, well, I'm not 100% uh, clear why we, you're saying that we are puni punishing the poor. But our shift in involvement is that our funds to the government, central government structure, has, have significantly decreased. We did not stop or you know, change our involvement at the decentralized level, at the micro level. I mean, this is, is continuing. So, yes, maybe indirectly you're right, saying that um, in the best <coughs> cases this money is you know, going down to the decentralized level, etc. There is definitely less. But still, I mean, you have to put that in perspective. The, the, the part of the Swiss government is tiny compared to the overall part. So, I'm not so sure if you can argue really in terms of punishing the poor, I mean, this would be for me too black and white of an argument. Huh? That's, that's the first thing. The second thing, yes, I think you are absolutely right. This is also an opportunity to reflect on the development corporation as a whole. And I mean, uh, the critics and the whole you know, discussion about the legitimacy of a development corporation is a little bit everywhere. You know? I mean, one of the big lessons learned in Mozambique, you know, from development cooperation is, as I showed on my, I think, second slide, is with the Paris Declaration, there was this hype where we said, okay, everybody is actually bringing the funds in one pool, and then we are agreeing with the partner government on the priorities, and then this is spent according to the priorities, then to the decentralized level, etc., etc. I mean, this was a development concept which was meaningful. It, clearly, it was meaningful, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So, the only thing, and there have been very sophisticated evaluations on this uh, general budget support issue, and all of them actually say the same thing. The same thing they say is general budget supports actually have increased generally within the government's transparency within the whole budgetary processes. Yes. But there is no somehow effect to be proven by uh, general budget support and reduction of poverty. You know, this is very clear. So I mean, one of the major lessons learned is that this somehow was a good idea, you know, and in times of concept, absolutely reasonable, because it has a history. Before these governments, I remember well when I was in Tanzania, uh, uh, also at the embassy, uh, responsible for the health sector, the Minister of Health told, told me, I have 952 projects to manage from different, you know, uh, actors and bilateral donors. So I mean, on my question, but when are you working for your priorities? I mean, you know, this was a, sa a situation which was clearly a situation which could not be sustained. The reaction was then this coordinated approach. Now, I mean, there's a fatigue, general fatigue on general budget support. So the whole question is, are we just falling back to a kind of a bilateral project support issue, or is there an alternative on that? I mean, these questions are highly and very much discussed today. So, I mean, uh, you're right, it's also an opportunity to think about instruments, the, 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 the relevance somehow of development, of development corporation. And uh, coming to your issue of, of of the peace process, um, I understand very well what you're saying. Huh? It is my limited understanding of the peace process at the moment is that this is exclusively 
somehow handled between a few persons at the moment. And the population, the civil society, etc., is hardly involved in the whole thing. This was one of the topics we had been discussing three weeks ago in Maputo, where we said it has at the end to be an inclusive process, otherwise it will not fly at the end. So, I mean, you know, um, to strike a balance between, not from the very beginning, you know, to have everybody you know, having its say in that process and uh, with the risk that at the, at the end nothing actually will happen and on the other side, you know, having a, a sufficiently inclusive approach I mean, this is a field of tension and, you know, um, it has to be handled clearly in the next uh, months and the coming months to go but I would very much agree that the, one of the deficiencies of the today's process is that the, it has been not sufficiently inclusive, clearly. Maybe to, to quickly raise again the um, punishing the poor issue, but you would agree that stopping budget, general budget support is a drastic austerity measure, and this would um, kind of really affect directly uh, service delivery? Um, Yes, indirectly, yes. Uh -huh. But uh, we know that money being spent on the national budget until it reaches the decentralized <coughs> level and the service provision level, that's a very long way to go. So um, our observation is that the service provision at the very decentralized level has not dramatically changed when we had a kind of a project approach uh, compared to the general budget support. So I'm not so 100% you know, uh, 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 sure that there is a very direct link to that. Thank you for your answer. I think the questions we have to shift them for the panel, I'm sorry. Yeah. So we move on to our um